bring it. When I remember Victoria Craig, I remember a home warm and, and welcoming. A home whose doors always open. I recall that whichever way you entered the Craig house, whether it was the front door, the back door, down the crazy steps, <laughs> back up, Charles is on the computer, rushing into another way tight. <laughs> but every, whatever door you took, you ended up in the same spot. <laughs> I recall a refrigerator that was mystically always filled to bursting with delicious food. Food that was served with matchless generosity to anybody who might want a bite to eat. Some of us would come for more than a bite to eat. And I believe I still hold the world record for most crab case eaten in a single city. <laughs> Miss Vicky's cooking would put most restaurant chefs to shame. And no matter how many people descended upon her home, that kitchen, Vicky's kitchen, would feed each and every one and somehow make it feel as, as if there were no trouble at all. I recall that, chick that, that kitchen you had chicken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I recall that kitchen, but my mind must be playing tricks on me because didn't the sun always, always seem to be streaming through that window? Mm -hmm. By the, the, the table, mm -hmm. the window there in the kitchen. It's always sunny. But that's not possible, is it? <clears throat> Maybe it was just the radiance of her perfect smile, the laughter, and the joy that shines so brightly. You can come into Vicky's kitchen with the weight of the world on your shoulders. And seconds later, your belly was full and your troubles forgotten. The kitchen was a sanctuary to me. Vicky was an educator and an entrepreneur, a counselor, a confidant, and a healer. Victoria was also an honest soul. Brutally honest. <laughs> but that honesty never felt mean spirited because that honesty came, honesty came from a place of love. Mm. Like when Vicky noticed that my beautiful head of grease down stocking cap induced waves <laughs> were fighting a battle against male pattern baldness <laughs> and losing. <coughs> Miss Vicky's sage advice that day was, brother. You just might have to let it go. <laughs> I listened to her. <laughs> Listen to Victoria Craig. Things tend to work out. In Vicky's kitchen. Give me another 30 seconds, Charles. In Vicky's kitchen, you were nourished, educated, loved, healed. Empowered, and if you needed a makeover, you got that too. <laughs> In closing, I would like to share an observation. An observation that I've made over the last few days. The last few trying and difficult days. Mere moments after the news of Vicky's passing, The Craig household was immediately full of friends. Friends and family who traveled near and far, and to this day, the house remains full towards of folks came to support this family that we hold so dear, to cry with them, or just to hold them in our hearts. The Craig are well loved. Amen. But then I observed something very, very special. 
Charles the Roman, Lord and Greg, were gathered in that kitchen. And what was amazing was they were ministering to the folks who were supposed to be ministering to them. I guess I should have been surprised. Despite the tragic loss, despite the incalculable pain, despite the crushing grief, through their sadness, through their tears, they're all gathered in the biggest kitchen. And amazingly, there was still nourishment. Folks were still being nourished. It was still warm. It was still sunny. Is the kitchen diminished? A bit. It would happen. Thank you.